chapter eight. Well, I don't think I can say this really good, so I know someone who can say this really good. There was an idea. Yeah, 2017, there was an idea. Now, 2017 was a pretty, pretty big year for us. Really was. I, I, I enjoyed 2017 a lot, and it, it was the f first year that we got to go to Horror Nights solo. It was. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so George and I went to Horror Nights for the first year solo and and it was a, it was a huge year for us that year because we just started and launched the knights of horror knights of horror uh, as we talked about last episode was a there was a lot of influences behind it but the biggest influence was tlv media so this was the first year that we we filmed videos of breakdowns which are still on our channel to this day uh so if you want to go back and watch how we started further than what i'm explaining you can go do that if you want to um, but this was the year that uh, we we started making videos about maze announcements. I am Anthony from the Knights of Horror, and we are going to get down to it. John Murdy sent us a bunch of tweets this morning about the announcement of the new Insidious Maze that is going to cover chapters 1, 2, 3, and coming soon in a theater near you, January 5th, 2018, chapter 4. We started... Uh, breaking down the event. First HHN TV spot directed by the infamous Eli Roth. I'm Anthony from the Nights of Horror and this is the HHN commercial breakdown. This is the full um, breakdown so before this video gets started I just want to remind everybody this is for both Hollywood and Orlando. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get started with the breakdown. We started making horror content. What's going on ladies and gentlemen? It is the Nights of Horror. I have taken about a week off but I'm back. We got some videos to shoot, we got some stuff to talk about, but today we are going to talk about a horror movie that not a lot of people really know that's a horror movie, but when you find out it's a horror movie, you're kind of like, okay, it makes sense in a way, but uh, this movie, this is one of the horror movies that's actually rated PG. Uh, this horror movie is the infamous shark, you already saw it in the intro. This is horror movie talk. Jaws. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. And we put up our first POVs, which I can tell you are not the best. Of a shotgun in his mouth. Police thought it was what the old-timers called cabin However, we would go on to later make them better, hopefully, and uh, see what we can do out of it. However, this was the first year that I, I really was committed to, to covering the event um, with, with my YouTube channel and stuff. It was a lot of fun. It really was. Um, we were more invested in TLEV that year, um, and, and they were starting to up their game more and more. And... We got to uh, watch in the live streams. We got to watch everything that they, they put up that year, HHN preparation for those who remember and whatnot. Um, and it was a lot of fun to, to, to really get involved now with the whole speculation, the, you know, making videos about it and whatnot. A whole lot of fun. So we show up 2017. We get our tickets and um, we, we go to the event and this was the first year, actually, that we got to meet TLEV. Uh, it was very brief, but it was very funny to us. We were walking down the escalator, going down to the lower lot. TLEV were coming up, and my cousin George spotted them. They looked at us, 
and my cousin George dropped Thomas's infamous line, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? And it was a big laugh, and Thomas said it back, and we laughed about it, and that was our brief meeting. That was it. That's That, that was our brief meeting, and that's how we first were introduced person in person. Um, so that was a lot of fun. That was really cool. A pretty good lineup, if I must say, uh, this year. It was... Not a 2016 lineup, but it was, uh, uh, I remember enjoying it a lot. Let's start off with American Horror Story Roanoke. Now, this was season six of American Horror Story, I believe. Um, And not my favorite season, but I will say this. I like the maze more than I like the show, for that season at least. Um, They did a really good job bringing the the story and world of Roanoke to life. Um, It was very Blair Witchy that, that season. Um, kind of like, it was like supposed to be a documentary of some sorts and whatnot. And then based around like this cult. Um, but it was really cool to see them bring all that to life and, and to bring like the twisted imagery of American Horror Story Roanoke to life, which was really fucking cool. Um, you got to see like a lot of things in there. Like you got to see people hanging on like trees and stuff. The trees actually came to life and fucking scared the shit out of us, which was really cool. Uh, the pig people that were you know wearing the pig masks and whatnot that was really cool and to go through that season was just insane um so that was a lot of fun this was the maze i think i really enjoyed the most that year which was the shining um based around uh stanley kubrick's film the shining this was so much fun to go through i mean to, to see this world come to life hedgehog maze all work and no play make jack a dull boy um to, to see a lot of the iconic scenes from that film. And this was another challenging maze for John Murray to make. Now, this was a movie that doesn't really pick up, intensifies, or gets scary until like midway to almost the end of the film. So he had a, he, you know, there was a lot to work with, but he had to make sure he touched on all those iconic moments of the, of the film. And he did just that. Um, that was a lot of fun to go through that and, and to see, uh, you know, like the elevator scene. We got to see like more of the hedgehog scene at the end. Um, to see effect with the twins was really cool. Um, to see, you know, the, the shower scene, the here's Johnny scene. That was a lot of fun to see all that. So that was really cool to go through. And I really enjoyed The Shining. One of my favorites, one of my favorite films of all time too. So Titans of Terror uh, came back. Now, this was the year they didn't include Michael Myers because John Murray said he needed to take a break. Um, cause they had done it two years in a row, but they had brought back Freddie, Jason and Leatherface to be in their own maze. And basically this was a compilation maze. It, you're supposed to be going through like a late night, um, horror thon. Uh, and John Murdy was the, he had a little cameo where he was on the screen, uh, announcing the horror thon, which I thought was really funny, but this was like a good, uh, little compilation of like some of the greatest hits of all these characters. You know, you had Freddie. Uh, who was like you? You went to his boiler room. You saw all the missing children. Uh, you saw a lot of iconic like moments of Freddy. Then you went to Jason. Of course, you went to Camp Crystal Lake, which was really cool. And then it all ended with Leatherface, where he was just doing Leatherface things, which I thought was hilarious. Um, that was a lot of fun to go through. That I believe uh, that was supposed to be that year, The Conjuring, but it got scrapped because the house looked very similar to the one in the, in the film. Um, so they replaced it with Titans of Terror. It was a good save. I enjoyed it. I would love to see the Conjuring at Halloween Horror Nights one year, but um, Titans of Terror was still a fun time. Saw the games of Jigsaw. This was the first year I would ever see a Saw maze at Halloween Horror Nights. I had just missed uh, Saw when I started going, which it was in 2010. Um, I started going in 2011. Uh, so I had just missed Saw. So to see a Saw uh, maze was really cool. Um, to see a lot of the iconic traps and and scenes and moments from the Saw franchise was cool. Ultimately leading down to give you an exclusive sneak preview of Jigsaw, which was coming out that year. Um, that was a lot of fun to see a lot of those traps come to life. A little cringy, I'm going to be honest with you, for those who, who know those movies, the deaths are really well plotted and planned out with the filmmakers, but it's still very cringy for me to watch. Um, but I still love those films for the gore aspect of them, which is really cool. So that maze was really cool. I really enjoyed it, and uh, to see Jigsaw at the event was really cool. I hope we can get him back pretty soon. They usually like to uh, kind of space him out, and uh, those mazes are just a lot of fun to go through. Insidious Beyond the Further. I believe Insidious uh, Chapter 4 had just dropped. 
um, and they wanted to do a film based, or they wanted to do a maze based around that. Um, wasn't my favorite Insidious maze, but it was still had its scariest moments. Really did. Um, and it was interesting um, to see what they were to do with this film. Um, I it was based around like you know the last key and stuff, so that was the big kind of big bad demon inside the uh, in the maze. Uh, so it was cool to see him. But like I said, it wasn't my favorite out of the ones they've done. It was still very fun and entertaining to walk through, but not entirely my favorite. The Horrors of Blumhouse. Now, I have an amazing story with this, but we'll go through this maze. This was honestly the first year they did the Horrors of Blumhouse, and this one so far has been my favorite. Uh, it started out with uh, the, the, the whole concept behind it was you were going to be going to a uh, movie theater to watch a horror movie marathon to kind of hide out during the purge however in order to get to said movie theater you had to go through the purge so as you're walking through uh parisian courtyard where pretty much most of it was built uh you walk through some s iconic scenes of the purge films basically kind of like setting up like you're in the purge right now and you're trying to make it to the movie theater well as you get out of that scene we do we then arrive at our facade which was right next to mel's diner which was, of course, the, the, the movie theater. The double feature was Sinister and Happy Death Day. It started off with Happy Death Day. You go through that. I had not seen Happy Death Day yet. I think that was just coming out in theaters. Um, so Happy Death Day was, was really cool to go through that and kind of see that. And then to watch the film and see a lot of that come to life was really cool. And then you, you transition to Sinister, which, in my opinion, Sinister 1 was one of Blumhouse's best films they ever made with Ethan Hawke. And um, they would go on that duo, the director and Ethan Hawke, to, to do The Black Phone, which was another great fucking film. Um, so to see Sinister come to life was really cool. To see the demon pop up was really cool. The film, you know, the, the little kids and whatnot. They even recreated the, the, uh, the poster for it of the kid kind of sliding blood against the wall and it says Sinister. That was really fucking cool. Um, you know, it was just cool to see the, the Sinister franchise, um, involved with Halloween Horror Nights. Never thought we would see it and we, we saw it. So that was really cool. And then it ended with, of course, uh, the guy from, I believe, Purge Anarchy, who was, I, I think, labeled as Big Papa. And he was the guy inside the truck that was using the machine gun, killing people. That's how the maze ended. Um, that was really cool. That was really fun. And then we exited. Now, here's where the fun story comes in. Uh, we had went opening night, and it was cool because they had a lot of the actors around the time we went were going through the maze. We had the cast of Happy Death Day that we got to see. Um, we got to see Frank Grillo, who is uh, the star of uh, Purge Anarchy and Purge Election Year, and that was really cool. And then to see him as Crossbones later on in the MCU, like that was fucking awesome. Um, and then we got to see, of course... Uh, the man behind Blumhouse himself, Jason Blum. We actually got to meet him. We took a picture with him. That was really fun to uh, to see Jason Blum. Uh, very nice guy. Very very nice guy. And uh, and I I've as you guys know I have a love hate relationship with Blumhouse. They may either make really good films or, or not so really good films, but they uh, they have been impressing me as of late. So I'll, I'll give them that. So got to see Jason Blum. Meet him. Um, that guy was really cool. And then that maze was just a lot of fun. Um, the walking dead attraction returned. I think we didn't go through it cause we've already been through it so many times. So I'm going to kind of skip over that. Uh, Titans of terror tram hosted by Chucky. Now this was to promote one of the new Chucky films that was coming out. That's why he was the host of the damn terror tram, but it was cool because it was the Titans of terror tram. So we had Jason, Freddie and Leatherface back with us, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we had Jason take over the Bates motel. We had Freddy taking over the War of the Worlds plane crash set. And then right before you left, we had a whole scene dedicated to Leatherface, which was really cool. So to see uh, these Titans represented really well, it was really fun to see, you know, some iconic stuff from Jason in front of the iconic Bates Motel. And then to see kind of different variations of Freddy at the uh, War of the Worlds plane crash set, which that alone played out so good with the character because it feels like a nightmare. And that's what Freddy is known for, uh, tapping into your nightmares. Um, so that was cool. And then to see the iconic ending to uh, to end it all, which was Leatherface, and they showed us a lot of the iconic scenes from the films and stuff, which was really cool. Into our earthly world. Certain passages were recited. 
It awoke something in the woods. Something. Toxic Tunnel, man. That was the first year we got Toxic Tunnel, and that is for those my Horn Heights diehard fans. We know how much we love the Toxic Tunnel. We know how many exits it's gotten since it's been there. Um, so yeah, Halloween was the front gates, and Urban Inferno was the Metro sets. The Jabberwockies did return again, um, but yeah, guys, 2017 was a fun year for us, and we really uh, launched the channel that year. We really were putting out HHN POV content. Um, we were giving our thoughts. We were breaking down our favorite facades, our favorite mazes, you know, and, and, and stuff to come, you know, and, and it, it only gets better from there, man. Nights of Horror, that was the beginning. That was year one of Nights of Horror. Um, and we would only continue to try to grow even more for year two for 2018. But that's another story for another time. Until then, I'm your host, Anthony. Thank you for watching Nights of Horror Origins. Love each and every one of you. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode. Feeling the love.